Okay, let's get started. Um, so, a couple of announcements. Portrait Studio will be released for Mac in just a couple days. You guys will have Portrait Studio fully functional and dedicated for Mac um, uh, on the 1st. It's currently up on the store. It's called Istabrax Portrait Studio. They forced us to name it like that. Um, and it's under Abu's account, Julio Perez. Um, for now, until we... Um, uh, it's disabled for now until we get to release it on the 1st. So you guys, uh, if you're interested, if you've been waiting for it, I'll announce it everywhere. Don't worry about that. I'll announce it everywhere. Hopefully everyone who, um, who wants a copy can get a copy. Um, and um, there won't be any sales until June or July this year. That's why I extended the sale time so much. Um, in the winter, uh, there won't be any more sales for a while, you guys. Um, it's just how we kind of work on Portrait Studio and develop it and perfect it. We need time outside of sale time to perfect to perfect it and work on it. So Abu's working on that on his end. He's also working on his own games, um, so we can't just always steal Abu's time um, as much as we'd want to. And um, another announcement, uh, the Google Plus community is closing. Uh, so I don't know when that's going to happen. It's I don't even know if it's already happened. Uh, but, uh, nope, it's still there. Um, but please make sure to move over into Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash istabrak. Please go there. Um, this is where I'm picking up all of the work for today's critique. This is where 14-day challengers can continue their challenge and finish it. This is where you can get uh, critiques from your community. Um, everything is here along with announcements upcoming February 1st. I'll release the resource pack for the villain design challenge illustration. Um, so please make sure that you are staying in touch with the community. This is the home base. It used to be here, but remember, it's not Google Plus that is us. We are the community. So wherever we go, that's where it goes. So stick to where we are, where we like to uh, hang out, and that's where you're going to get updates, and we're going to get the most out of your work um, and the critiques as well. So make sure you guys go there. Um, any other announcements? No, that's it. Portrait Studio, Reddit, and the Villain Design Challenge. I've been announcing this for a while. Um, uh, as well, so uh, that's all for today for announcements. All right, guys, bye. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, let's get started. Um, so this piece here, the, the artist is saying it looks cartoony, and they have no idea why. It looks cartoony because his expression is like he's in a like in an ice cream shop. Like he's like all he really needs is a little Dairy Queen hat. Is that what they do in Dairy Queen? They just wear a, a little hat. And then they just serve their ice cream or however that hat looks. All right, he just looks like he's ready to serve you some some ice cream. And the reason why is because he just looks way too happy. At the same time, kind of stiff and um, kind of has that like I hate my retail job expression. So expression is really really vital in stuff looking cartoony. All right. Then there's the eyes. Of course, it's always the eyes. It should have started with the eyes. Uh, the eyes are one big reason why he looks cartoony, and that's because you're using this eye right here. This little eye design, this little extra eye thing, so Kung Fu Panda. Um, do you see this eye that he has? See that eye? That's a very cartoony eye that you guys are drawing. You can use it on females. But outside of contact lenses, you don't really have eyes that have this much of a specular outline and all of that. Um, uh, let's look up uh, contact lenses. Oh, I'm so sorry about the creepy shit that you guys are seeing here. Um, so you take a look at these. See these? They look very fake, and it's very obvious to tell that they're fake. Even the colored ones that are supposed to look normal look fake because eyes just don't have this perfect outline around them all the time. If your eye is light colored, you just don't always have this little outline. Some eyes have it, but it's, it's it comes and goes. It's kind of have like different variations to it. So a realistic eye that's colored really doesn't have that excessive outline around it. We only do it in our drawings because we try to add to the beauty or to the detail around the eye. And then male face. All right, so let's look at a male face that has a little bit of eye. So this is the studio light. So that's one of the reasons why you think that his eye right now has that outline. It's a natural eye color. It's got like a little studio light just around the, the iris that's facing him that's on the camera. This one here is probably the most beautiful eye that we can find, like the most beautiful eye we can look at as a male. He's a very beautiful eyed male. 
this is the most, I guess I'm saying, the most beautiful a male can be while still having a beard. But if you take off the beard and adjust the bone structure, it'll be a perfectly female eye. But even then, the outline isn't that sharp everywhere. Now I'm trying to find just a basic face, nothing too intense, beauty-wise, very average. You can see the eye speculars are there, but you don't really have that crazy contrast around the eye. Also, the pupils are a little bit small. Um, so you do have a small pupil, but you have that whole extra little highlight happening in the eyes. Then you have the expression, and then you have this just general form problems. Um, so a lot of the stuff, cart cartoony stuff with form problems is just your, it's almost cell shaded. Um, you don't really have a distinct core shadow, a cast shadow for the face. Um, you have a lot of contrast, so it looks sketched. It looks like it's contrast dependent sketch on a paper. Then you have the eyes are a little bit too pretty and they're kind of unrealistic and they're looking forward and then the expression, his smile seems a little happy and content. Definitely not the kind of expression I would give a guy who has massive scars around his face and lots of years as a, like a mercenary or some kind of military character or, or some kind of fighter or warrior character. So let's start off with the expression. I'm just going to adjust the expression really quickly and that's by getting rid of this little mouth smile right here. Even if he was supposed to be neutral, his neutral should be angry. That's the character personality that you're drawing. So remember, we're separating personality from expression. Um, write that back. Uh, personality is the default emotion of the character, pretty much is what I'm saying. And again, we're separating emotion from expression as well. Um, until further notice, obviously, we'll combine expression and emotion together. Uh, but for now, emotion, we're using it as a variable to assess personality. His default emotion isn't this joyous, it's, oh, it's, you know, cup is half full type of character. This guy is a cup is half empty kind of character. Um, a really, a character covered in scars, you ha you're working with a trope, you really don't want to mess around with tropes too much. So I'm just going to give him a bit more of a default face, kind of... The cup is half empty because if we don't, because if, if we think of it otherwise, we're going to get killed and get ambushed. This guy is basically, you're always in danger until further notice. Because he's seen danger in his life. He's, he's experienced it. He knows what he's going through. He's very aware of his surroundings. He's not going to give the world the benefit of the doubt. Oh, I'm going to be safe. Nothing bad, bad is going to really happen to me. Obviously, the bad has happened, and he got scars because of it. And as a writer, as, a, as an artist, and writer and artist should really be synonymous. You are thinking like that when you're writing your character. The age, as well, is what I'm adding now. By distancing the mouth from the nose, I'm adding age. And then the expression is in one big area, the powerhouse. So this is before, this is after. The powerhouse of expression on the face. What is that? Does anyone know what it is? <clears throat> I'll wait for an answer. I'm actually just going to wait. <laughs> So the powerhouse of expression on the face, what is it? It's really only one area, and it is the a single area that changes everything about the face, and it reveals eyebrows. Exactly, Christy. Um, it is the eyebrows. The eyebrows are the beginning and the end of all expression. It, if you chose one thing that you could only move in a face, and you weren't allowed to move anything else, it would be the eyebrows. A smile does not do much. An eye does not do much. The nose is just stupid. It just sits there and looks pretty. It doesn't do anything. It's the eyebrows that represent personality and emotion and expression and, and just where you are and it really reveals a lot about the character. Naturally for males we have low flat eyebrows but this guy again his cup is half empty. Everyone's always in danger um, and that's just the default. You're always in danger until you you know finish your enemy. So this guy, he really does not have this really high eyebrow business, this high curiosity. The world is a beautiful place. Even here, it's too. I know it's too high. Um, it's not too high considering the default that the artist worked on, but I would lower it even more. It's not anger. It's his default face. 
He's not angry, he's aware, he's alert, but at the same time wise. He's got that wisdom, and then of course he's got that masculine strength. So just by shifting the mouth and the eyebrows, we've done a lot for the character. Maybe if he smiles, he looks like this. Like if he sees the beloved person, if he sees his daughter or his wife, he'll probably smile like this. Um, but you're doing a character design. You're doing a face where you're studying the character's personality and you've thrown scars on his face. Um, and unless you're doing a comic book panel, you're really just confusing your audience by throwing the scars on and giving him a happy-go-lucky smile. Maybe you didn't even intend for the smile. Um, um, maybe that's not what you were going for, but you still got one. All right. So we took care of the expression, which made him look a little cartoony and dorky. Um, and that, that, com that combined with the, <clears throat> the scar is kind of what you were, might have been referring to when you said he looks cartoony. So because I lowered the eyebrows, I'm going to cast their shadow down. The age in the eyes comes from the droop of the upper eyelid. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of droop here. just like that because we've lowered down the eye eyebrow and really we're not we haven't lowered down the eyebrow just the hair we've lowered down the entire brow bone and the brow fat and the muscle there so that's what we're doing here and I'm just radially building the organic shape that is that bubble all right lots of contrast in here too it's almost blinding so I'm just going to get rid of that. Excessive contrast is not where color, good colors sit. Good colors do not sit on white. Good colors sit on the grays. The more grays you have, the more information you have. And then finally, we've got the pupils and the iris. A bit too big, a bit too girly. Feels like he's wearing these contact lenses. So I'm getting rid of them. I'm going to try to build a more realistic eyeball shape. And that is due to your cartooniness, and I'm doing that because your cartooniness in your drawing comes from just, um, and I'm sorry to say it like this, you're not drawing very realistically. The drawing well is not working. The realism is not working. So a part of that is why you're drawing cartoony. You, you don't know your edges yet. You don't know your geometry yet. This is the bread and butter with which we draw, and yours is weak. Altogether, all things considered, your, vo your volume and your form needs work. So I'm just throwing in some cast shadows from the brow bone down onto the eyeball. All right, and then, so he can keep his eyes large. He's very, you can keep his eyes large. He's very handsome in that his eyes are big. Big eyes is a, is a, is a, is a quality with which we describe a handsome man but I would still try to reinforce some kind of bone structure and then give him those uh, temple lines as well, the temple edges. And for males, it's a really, really strong distinction moving in from the eyebrow. Your eyebrows are a little bit too sharp. This is all line-dependent sketch, sketch-induced, you know, uh, line-dependency-induced brushwork. Look at your all your brushes for the hair. They're all the same size, but you're trying to describe large clumps of hair. You only describe large with large. A large brush stroke is what you need, and the dispersion of the of the randomness of your brush strokes is the representation of the texture. Hair doesn't do this, but when you're working with a large brush, what you're trying to represent are the, are the clumps together. So what, what what your large brushes end up depicting is a more realistic representation of the random dispersion of hair. So it's actually pretty intentional mess, not an actual mess. Whenever when some whenever someone says be messy, don't worry, it don't worry about being clean. Um, there's no clean way to paint hair. They're wrong. Uh, that you actually do have a specific pattern you're working with, a hair growth pattern growing in different directions. So your brush stroke should be larger starting out to, to collect you know the general brute and growth pattern of the hair and then your brush shrinks into different varied sizes large to small mostly on average 
to collect the parts together. And look at the navigator, that's starting to look like real hair. So it's not random, it just behaves like random, and it feels like random, because at face value, obviously, they're unclean brush strokes. And then there's the parting in the hair. And then I'm just going to give it a minor surface texture, shorter on the sides, very, very military. Careful that it doesn't turn into a buff boy haircut too soon. Uh, thinner hair has a lighter value on the sides. And um, I'm just going to cast a stronger cast shadow off the eyes. Just that whole region needs a darker value. And then right in here, this is that Neanderthal eyebrow that I talk about. Men have it. Very strong eyebrow bone. Even in between the eyes, we have some of it left over. And then you got your value sharing. So value sharing is a giveaway straight up. If you were my private student, I would be just throwing you into a lot of nose studies. Your value sharing here is unforgivable. Um, it's a sign that you don't really have any idea what your what your language is with your value range. So you have black, and then you have all the way up to white. Well, obviously, we're not using black and white. We have dark gray and, and whitish gray. And those all represent different degrees of elevation or depression. But right now, you're using a dark value on the sides of the nose. I mean, what is that? You're, you're saying that the nose is a cavity? So that is a basic, and that's what we get rid of as soon as you get into form studies. That's the first thing we tackle. We put everything aside. Character design, tomorrow. Color, tomorrow. Blending, tomorrow. Everything that is rushed has to do with um, your, your value sharing, your form language, and your form studies. I'm giving him a bit of a dark value around the eyelids. It's not so much eye bags, but it's like a regular amount. If he's younger, just skip this. And a nice good block for the lower eyelids. Puff. Okay. The messier your brush strokes just basically means unblended brush strokes. It doesn't mean wrong brush strokes. It doesn't mean wrong values. Another reason why he looks cartoony is because he has mascara on. So you can go ahead and lighten this whole area down. So he doesn't have that. Really the only place that would have black geez, um, is the, uh, the crease. And the crease is hardly visible. You're kind of mixing it with the eyelid. In this case here, it's kind of mixed in with the eyelid. Don't really have a waterline. The waterline gets thicker for older characters because the eyelid is drooping, revealing more of the inside of the eyelid. We also have the inner corners and outer corners of the eye. All right, and you see how much I'm delaying the people in the iris because I'm trying to get out as much realism as possible now. Alright, and then you've got what you're, what you're doing with the nostrils. So you don't really have dark spots. Actually, before that, there's a lot to fix. Um, the mouth is too bright. Right, there are areas that stay dark, but it's really not that dark. And there are areas that get white, and it's really not that white. We're keeping contrast low the further we get from the eyes, and we're exaggerating contrast the closer we get to the eyes. The brush strokes are used for the beard, exactly the same thing. You're supposed to be rep representing the clumps of hair together. Beards have clumps. There's just like other, any other group of body of hair. And it's mostly detail relief. That's the pattern. So a couple of small brush strokes, and then blend. And you just keep going back and forth like this. Blur the start of any hair body. And use the negative space to just to, to, to uh, kind of represent the, the starting pattern of the hair. So we're using the negative space, which is the skin tone value. Right, another thing that he could have is some laugh lines. Not really wrinkles, just laugh lines. 
see how my brush is large and where I place my brush is not the hair pattern. It's not painting with a hair tone. I'm painting with a skin tone, but it's helping make the skin make the hair look more realistic. And I'll eventually shrink my brush as I go. Beard doesn't really start this high. I need some really concrete blocks here for all of the parts of the face. got like a brighter beard you really don't need that much detail but just to get those lines out of the way at least upper lip is just a bit darker it's thinner and darker and then I'm gonna bring in people in the iris um, I just bring them in with one solid value first and that really helps me make it look as realistic as possible um, so. oops So what I do is I just lay one in there and get another one and then just try to work with them until they feel like they are looking at the character, at the viewer at least. Zooming in gets you more like, a, I don't know what, like points of movement for the move tool. Zooming out, flipping the canvas are all ways to help you assess whether or not the eye looks like it's looking. And if you feel like the eyes aren't open enough, so what I would do is I'd give him that thousand yard stare, or whatever it's called. Um, it just feels like, oops, it just feels like his eyes are a little tired. But if he is neutral right now, then that's where I would keep his eyes, like that. Okay, and then he does have color in his eyes, I'm not going to rush that. I'm not going to try to make his eyes look like he's, he's a Maybelline model. I'm blending the edges, because sometimes that brush can be a little bit sharp. The hard round. I'm throwing in a really slight color here. And if he does have colored eyes, I'll address first the, sh the, the, the way the water on the surface of the eye lightens colors under it. Like if you put your hand under water, your skin looks lighter. That's just because of the way light works in there. So I'd address that first and then I would go in with the pure black and find the exact perfect center of each iris for the pupil. And that should be enough color. I don't need to go in and give him these little sparkles that his hooded eyes really wouldn't allow in. These lights that the, the hooded eye just doesn't allow in. <clears throat> Which was to do this. Like Unless he had gray, sparkly anime eyes, really don't need to be doing this stuff. Okay, and that's what makes eyes look cartoony. Just keeping him like this, this weathered champion. So you can show strength in his face. You can also show some weakness because he's tired. He's been doing this too long. And that's pretty much how you make it less cartoony. So we're going to look at the before. And that's really where your character design comes in. You start branching outside of art to, to paint your character. You start becoming a writer. You start branching out into human psyche and psychology. It's like this guy, would he really be a glass half full kind of guy with those scars on his face? Okay. So uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done, but I'm just going to add in a slight little lash line, like nothing intense, nothing major. Any questions at all, anyone? He's starting to look a lot more realistic. You can actually take him seriously. And let's just look at what we're missing, really, when we when we don't put in these specular highlights. We're really not missing out. Really not missing out. This doesn't really do much for the character. I mean, would I really be able to see this light on the 
eye if the cast shadow off the eyebrow extends all the way to the half of the eyeball? No, I wouldn't really see it. I'd probably be see it, seeing it some, somewhere down here. But because this is a drawing and it is not a realistic photograph, it looks like I'm painting a character that's about to cry. But if you're allowed to put that anywhere, you put it on the lower. God, this guy is so sad. <laughs> you put it on the lower part of the iris. Sorry, I just needed to make a quick adjustment. Your brushwork, your texture representation, it's all, it all needs to be worked on. Your form, your form studies, what you're doing with the nostrils. I haven't done the nostrils yet. I'm just going to use a black black on and blend away for that radial ascent into the cavity of the nose and then some of the dark spots for the mouth too severe. A lot of that hair, obviously beards grow out of the nose. I'm just using smaller brush strokes for this area. <clears throat> if he's a little bit older, he might be able to afford an even deeper wrinkle on the sides of the nose. Sometimes men have this little sunken in look when they get older. All right. Even when he smiles, he should smile with, with, with a heavy brow. You know, he's a man who smiles with a heavy brow. Remember, it's personality. And then, of course, your background's too bright. But if I really look at it, I mean, it's not that bright. It's not white, at least. So I'll forgive that. Before, do you see why he looks cartoony? Starts off with the contrast, goes into the eyes, goes into the smile. And then your lack of grays has really affected the, the value. And I'd stop here, transfer into color, and then bring in my blackest blacks. Because just don't bring in black now. You don't know what that's going to do later on. And then any areas of highlight, any areas of vi vibrance, you know, any areas where we have lots of water, I just focus on oily areas. So areas like where sweat pools or oils around the nose here around the cheeks, I'd bring in those really large brush strokes right there. I'd bring it in around the hair. But for the eyebrows, really, sometimes we have these really strong like little areas here. And then out of those areas, we have wrinkles that sit right beside them that instead of catching shadow, they catch light. Something like that. Sometimes it's right above the eyebrow, right over here. Sometimes it's on like the dome of the frontal lobe. We have little speckles of sweat. Sometimes it kind of pulls inside the scar as well. And then of course the nose, which is the oiliest in the entire face. Got your core shadow, which is inaccurate here on the nose. <clears throat> yes, some beards grow out. The part of the nose that is close to the beard, that's nose hair. <laughs> Next time you're looking at someone who has a beard, that's nose hair. <laughs> I started laughing the first time I found that out because I used to love, oh, I still love beards, but. He's got boogie beards. Okay. So a little bit more splotches of highlight there just to add vibrance if you feel like you lost it. You can go into the hair and add some more shine. And him looking like he's been through a lot is just me picking up on the cues of these wrinkles you have around the eyes and of the scars. That's me picking up on him being through a lot. All right, and I'd go back and start detailing. I'd some of the areas I detail after we fixed all after you, only after you fixed all these tonal changes, I'd go in and start detailing around the eyes, sharpening where the eyes start and finish. Don't worry too much about symmetry because symmetry kind of just falls off when you get older. Um, 
I'd clean up this area here. I'd work on the eyebrows, blend those out. I'd sharpen this area, get more real scalp detail on the hair growth. I'd go in and identify specific clumps of hair that are on top of other clumps and highlight accordingly. And this is just how the detailing happens. But detailing cannot be accessed if you haven't processed all the core shadows yet and gotten rid of that excessive contrast you had before because that was that's what made him look cartoony. He also had these cute little cheeks here. You might as well just get rid of the scars and get rid of the wrinkles and give him the ice cream hat. It would be funny though if you gave him an ice cream hat now because then the contrast is so funny. Um, as for him looking like a military guy, right now he looks like he could be a dad. What I would want in a character design is for my character to look military. So if he really was, I'd give him that intense body type and the pinhead towards the top. And this is just the brute. You know, you're saying you have more bronze than brains, but obviously the wisdom is still there in the eyes. And we have that kind of close cut hair. You can change the hair pattern to have more of the receding Vegeta hair hairline like that to add some age as well. Okay, thicker neckline means stronger body type, less square towards the top. There's different ways. <clears throat> what about like Lord of the Rings military? Same deal. Same deal. Doesn't matter what age we're talking about. You're still talking about mass murder. <laughs> so war is war. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. Yeah, I would give this head and body type to Boromir. Absolutely Saturn. Boromir especially because he was a more of a, a large heavyweight carrying the great sword and all of that. Um, with lungs long, strong enough to blow that horn of Gondor. So is it the horn of Rohan or the horn of Gondor? I forget. Um, but yeah, um, I don't want ice cream anymore. <laughs> when Mr. Breck says you need to do some form studies, it's like getting an F and having to restart the class. Um, yeah, but I, I, that's why I don't do grading in my classes because what is uh, grading really doesn't help. It's like a permanent representation of one mistake you made for the rest of your life. It's not, it's not good. I don't want you to think about it as being an F, though I understand what you're saying. Um, it, a form study or two, you're already getting better from where you used to be. So a form study is a, a remedy. See it more as a comparison of you found your illness, you took your antibiotics, and by day two you're already feeling better. It should be more like that, you know. Gondor, the Horn of Gondor. Okay. Um, add the hat. No. <laughs> uh, thank you. He looks so much better than I intended. I guess I'm going to go back and do some form studies for a bit. Oh, that's you. So you're the artist? Okay. Um, so yeah, do some form studies. Um, other things that you could do to make him look more like a, a weathered warrior is shrink his eyes, sep bring his eyes closer together, but he would be less cute. So if he's a love interest, um, don't do that uh, because love interests are usually represented as attractive, even in casting um, in Hollywood and all of that. You really wouldn't cast a guy that looks like no girl would ever go for him. <laughs> so that's how you're doing it with your drawings as well. You're casting them based off um, their looks as well. All right, so younger, but wrinkled. It doesn't really match. It's not really working. But of course, you have rain over what you're writing about the character. If you're going for black hair, you do have to go back and darken it. Um, not everything has to be a variation of gray. You can just straight up just darken hair that's black. There's no need to keep it light. If it's black, it's black. Um, let me do that with levels instead. Okay, so black hair is black hair. There's really no need to, to, to push some kind of constant gray everywhere. That's where we get most of our contrast is from pigment. Write that back to me. A lot of the contrast is in dark spots, but outside of dark spots, it's all pigment. So if he has those pure black eyebrows, just start, make sure you're starting the eyebrow pattern with that as the base. If he has a strong black beard, make sure you're starting off like that. That's where you're getting most of your contrast. Right? If, if you guys forget about pigmentation, where do you go to bring in contrast? All the wrong areas is where you will go. 
You will go to the face, you will go to the nose, you will go to the sides of the nose, you will go to the eyebrows, you will go up here with the shadows. If you're craving contrast, do it right. Go to the actual pigmentation. Start with pigmentation and cavities. I uh, Pupils uh, are pigmentation, they're black. Uh, cavities like nostrils and mouth holes and other scars or wrinkles, those are actual cavities and trenches. <clears throat> no girl would go for this guy. What? No, what? No, that's not what I was saying. I was saying this, this guy is handsome. But if you want him to feel more manly, bring his eyes closer together. And you'll see that he's a little bit less beautiful and therefore less of a love interest. No, this, 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 oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> I have to say something really inappropriate. Um... All right, so bringing the eyes closer in together. Do you see what happened? Before, after, see that? Even closer together with a larger nose, you're getting closer to ogre and uh, you're completing the character design for something off the, off that beauty spectrum. Okay, the biggest problem here, I'm not gonna critique the whole thing. So I'm just gonna crop that. I'm going to crop it right over there, just for it to be about the portrait, um, is the eyebrow. What you did um, with the eyebrow, it's okay, Kyle. What you did is you um, you made a front view eyebrow. All right, so what you need to do is recenter the arc of the eyebrow. Because a front view eyebrow does not work on three quarter view. In three quarter view, everything is three quarter view. Just because it's one of the eyes looks slightly like front view doesn't mean that you get to get away with a slightly front view eye. Oh, I'm shifting over into three quarter view. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can paint a front view face. So I have that set for me. So I just really need to learn one half of the three quarter view, and I'll be really good at at uh, three quarter view. No. You don't learn just the far half. The half that is closest to you in three-quarter view also is in rotation. But this isn't moderate three-quarter view anyways. It's not the three-quarter view where we can still see the other part of the face, except the ear is gone. No, this is almost side view, but you had a front view eyebrow. This is even more unforgivable. Right. A lot of stuff happens from the side view, so you have the side of the eyebrow bone as well. So this front view eyebrow was holding back the rotation. A lot of the eye as well, I mean the eye is in three quarter view, which is great. We have that, especially now that I fixed that eyebrow line, that, that uh, brow bone line, but I would tuck the eye in even further towards the far half. Okay. Just because you can paint a front view eye <clears throat> doesn't mean you're prepared for three quarter view. Three quarter view is the complete restart of a face. All right, write that back. It's a completely, re you're starting from scratch. Rotation means it's a completely New perspective, new perspective, new face. Write that down. Cheekbones on females get to be a little bit higher. <clears throat> so you've got all this highlight on all these areas, but you have no light on the cheekbones, which is not acceptable. You need that light on the cheekbones. It's not really that sharp, but we're still sharpening it so we can assess where exactly the corner of your eye is starting. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. Lots of classes today. As for your nostrils, they seem okay, but they seem a bit low. Nostrils from the side view tend to look high. So the nostril is actually pretty high in comparison to the septum. From front view, we don't see this little bit here. We just see nose tip and nose uh, nostril ends. You see how they're level? But you can't have a nostril lower than the nose tip. 
if from front view at least you painted it level. So that's why I like to assign rotation of the same face, preserving likeness but in rotation. This nose cast shadow is traveling this way. So that means your darkness on the forehead starts here. It sits on top of the bridge of the nose and moves away. So think about this cast shadow. What really are you doing with it? And this would be a very long cast shadow moving from the eye that way. Okay, and because it's almost three quarter view, we can see a lot. I mean, because it's almost side view, we can see a lot of the bumps that would show if it was three, uh, side view. Because it's a very strong three quarter view. If it was mild three quarter view, then we wouldn't really show the bump of the chin. <clears throat> I would actually rotate the eyebrows even more. They really kind of almost flatten out. Because the edge of the uh, eyebrow, um, what is it called, the arc, is aligned with the temple. It's wherever the temple is. And then because the eyebrow is in rotation, the start of the eyebrow actually is delayed. We actually push it all the way there. Because that's the rotation. That's what happened. The eyebrow seems like it's farther away from the eye. If we push the eyebrow here, it looks right, but from front view, that doesn't make much sense. Because eventually it should line up with the nostril. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it's been rotated in the before, even more so. So before, after. See that front view eyebrow? Doesn't make much sense that it's been drawn all the way out there. And eyebrows don't really grow that far out. But if you do have a bushy brow, I mean, you have a bushy brow, but you can still make the bushy brow and keep the rotation intact. Before, it seemed like the eye was big and it got away with it because cartooning it lets you get away with that. But you're rendering and you're trying to render realistically. And it was like you completely erased the temple. The temple sits right over here. This is the side of the face. Maybe a little bit more that way but you have the eyebrow over here. Usually the temple should just take only the tail of the eyebrow and then the arc of the eyebrow is matched with the temple edge. So this is a rotation problem, which goes back to perspective, which goes back to form studies, which goes back to really low poly heads and three quarter view that you should study. <clears throat> and that's it for today. I'll take a look at this one next time because this is more to do with working with reference, which is outside of what we're talking about. Um, by a lot. <clears throat> uh, so, um, do you guys have any questions about these pieces here? Um, <clears throat> yeah, the eyebrow is part of the rotation. Good job, Hamish. Rotation, new perspective, new face. Excellent. Um, Addendum. Rotate only the image. Do not attempt to rotate yourselves or each other without the proper safety equipment. <laughs> That's good. This is why I go live. Any um any que any questions at all? How do you send in art? Good question. Um, so you go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon. That'll take you to our community on Reddit. We've recently moved here, so please make sure you join Reddit, please. 
um, and uh, uh, you submit your work here. When I do the critique hours, uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes before the class starts, I look through here and choose something. I try to usually choose things that are related to each other in fundamentals or problems. And um, I, uh, I work like that. Uh, so make sure that you're going here and joining. <clears throat> Um, there you can join us on Facebook though. I do want that group to grow as well if you guys are uh, using Facebook or you guys um, are interested in finding a way to contact me uh, directly. You can contact me through the Google through the Facebook group. Um, and uh, that's it. Yep. So make sure that <clears throat> you guys are uh, getting started on your uh, villain challenges. You can still pretty much get started on your narrative, uh, but the resource pack and the references I'll upload soon. And uh, make sure to like videos if you're not getting notifications for some reason. It's because you're not considered an active subscriber. And it doesn't, YouTube doesn't bother sending you notifications if you're not an active subscriber. If you just pop into my videos and you don't subscribe, obviously you're not going to get any notifications. Recent subscribers and people who have, who have a history of liking my channel are the ones who get notifications. Um, so if you want to be uh, notified when I go live for my after hours, when I do my personal art and just talk to viewers or hang out and play, um, uh, you won't get a notification if you don't like my videos or like the channel or I'm not sure really how it works. Um, uh, I mean, subscribe to the channel and then, and then just like whatever video that comes up or like the stream, even though I might delete them. Um, and if you want to join me on Patreon, you guys have a little less than a week, um, to work on your assignment due on the 5th. Every first, first Tuesday of every month is our, uh, apprenticeship private stream. Um, and it comes with assignments, it comes with brushes and all kinds of stuff and resources that I offer. Um, you work with a group in the Discord community. It's pretty much free reign. You have beginner assignments for beginners as well as advanced assignments for more advanced students. Um, I try to cater to all levels of skill. And um, of course, it always gives back, to the, gives back to the channel. So if you don't feel like being a student, you can always subscribe as a $1 or $5 patron, uh, whatever floats your boat. Uh, thank you everyone who has... Uh, supported me on patreon it means a lot that you guys are are uh, financially backing this entire community it's just an amazing way to give back if you're interested in that um and portrait studio will be out on friday um so portrait studio for mac if you have a mac and you've been wondering when it's coming out it's on the first um we've been prepared to release it since october 2018 but apple made it very difficult for us to do absolutely anything we finally got uh, everything that they needed done, and um, it is now available on the 1st, um, just a couple of days. If you're interested in it, if you have someone who is interested in it as well, um, link them, let them know. I will be uploading announcements throughout the week. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye.